What's up, everybody? This is Tyler Stuff and 200 Heroes Spitting News, and, um... <sighs> alright, 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 alright. A couple of friends at school wanted me to show off some of the gear that I have. So, my DJ gear, of course. So I figured I'd finally go ahead and do so. So let's start off with some of the equipment here, and I hope you enjoy this video because this is going to be a long one. Okay, so I guess we'll start off with the uh, speakers. So here, I am missing a couple of stuff. Uh, there is a, another one of those that is at school that does not have a woofer that I have to bring home. There is a, um, there's another mixer that I have to show off. And I'm mixing a, and I'm missing a realistic amp, one of those. But I guess I'll start off here. So right here, these are two community, uh, C, I believe they're CS38Ms. These are stage monitor speakers. They're in pretty rough shape in the exterior, but these guys pack a punch where it counts. Uh, this one over here is a refurb project I started working on. This guy did not have a proper woofer in it. I did have a woofer, but the woofer was blown out, so I went ahead and I threw an EV woofer in there, and it works just fine. Uh, these are 15-inch guys. They are huge. These are really big woofers for stage monitors. Normally, stage monitors would be around 8 inches to 10 inches. These are 15, so these are overkill, way overkill, and this, they are a little dusty, so don't mind it. Um, this one over here is not in the best shape. This one's in really nasty shape, really dirty and whatnot, but it works, and I don't really use these guys very often, so I might actually just um, take the woofers out of them and sell them, the cases, uh, mainly for the factor that they've got this shaggy carpet, rat fur carpet on it, and I can't stand that crap. And uh, I also got some incoming uh, speakers, some sub cabinets that I might be actually using. So yeah, below it, over here to the left of it, this is a Serum Vega B36A. This is an 18 inch subwoofer. This thing is huge. It, of course, is a bass scoop, so how this actually works is it compresses the signals coming in that chamber there, the subwoofers in that general chamber, compresses them, shoots them out here. Uh, the left channel brings air in, the right channel brings air out, so this thing really kicks a punch. This thing does not have the original Serum Vega in it. This thing actually has an 18-inch uh, JBL Pro Series installed, so it's a very large woofer in this thing. Um, I mean, like, the thing is gigantic. I took, I made a video of taking it apart, so I guess I'll upload it sometime. But the woofer needs a little recone, so I don't use it that much. And it's also extremely bulky, so using it is not a very good option. And of course, who could forget my favorite mills of the brand? These are the vintage PV115s. I've done a lot of videos of these guys, and I just love them. I love the way they sound. I love the way they perform. They are amazing speakers. These are 15-inch DJ speakers. These were the top-of-the-line um, passive subwoofers that you can get back in 1989. And uh, I'm not even kidding. These were the top of the line. You, they had smaller versions of these dating all the way to six, I believe, maybe six inches. These, of course, are the 15 inches, which are the largest models you can get. Um, and the cases are all about the same size. Um, so these were the largest subwoofer, or actually passive subwoofers that you could put on stands. And there's the matching stands for them. These things are made out of solid steel. Like, look. Solid steel. These are really, really heavy-duty stands. These and they go pretty tall too. They go to an extent where they can't they go go past the ceiling here, so they're very tall. Um, so yeah. So what else is there? Um, then we've got the KV300. This is a powered system um, that has a 15-inch Black Widow in it. Those have Scorpions, by the way, but that has a Black Widow in it. That's more of a restore project. I actually wanted to buy a second Black Widow, take that Black Widow out and put the uh, Scorpion, or the Scorpions out of here and put the Black Widows in these. But that would make these things extremely heavy. And uh, Black Widow upgrades, of course, are possible. They're not the best idea with these systems. And I'm just fine with the Scorpions in those guys. The scorpions seem to do okay, as the Black Widow is just freaking overkill. I mean, like, the Black Widow in this guy outperforms this in low frequencies. It's actually kind of funny. Um... But, nonetheless, it's very, very heavy. I mean, this is probably the same weight of that down there. And it's a lot smaller, though. I'm talking, this thing's probably 120 pounds, or maybe maybe less than that, maybe 90 pounds around there. But it's still very, very heavy. Um, 
and it is powered, so I normally use this thing in gigs as a subwoofer if I need the extra thump, and it seems to do just that just fine when it comes to revealing the extra thump. Um, but for the majority of the part, uh, when it comes to really low frequencies, I use that guy. But of course, it's not as loud as that one. And it's not as bassy, I guess you could say. So that's what I got for speakers. And keep in mind, I got another one of those, and I've got some sound techs at the school, some 15-inch sound techs that I don't use. They're kind of crappy. Um, so those are not really explanatory. The other one of those that I have is uh, doesn't have a subwoofer in it. So let's go into more of the uh, mixer category. I have two mixers. I have an old Rasmus soundboard. It's a six channel. I think I've showed it off in my DJ, like the DJ setup video I did a while back with the PVs. So that I have that board. It's just right now it's currently at school, not being used. It was the first drawing you ever did a look at that. For all the obsessed idiots out there, I was once an obsessed idiot, so that was probably like the best drawing I ever did. Anyhow. You know, I'm a terrible drawer. But anyhow, this is this guy, um, this is both a mixer and a, this is a whole case. Now, normally I hate rack-mounted systems. I mean, like, I, I used to hate them. I thought they were a crappy idea. I thought they were bulky and kind of dumb. But after this system, I kind of fell in love with um, rack-mounted equipment. So let me show you what I got here. So this is a very basic setup. I've got a Mackie Designs. Um, what is this guy? This is a Mackie Designs. Uh, CR1604, so this is basically a 16 channel uh, mic slash line mixer. This has Phantom built onto it, and this doesn't have as much goodies as the, um, the Rasma does. The Rasma is definitely older, uh, it's from the 80s, but it has all these ref um, return and effect lines that this guy doesn't have. But this also has some stuff that that, um, that, that Rasma board doesn't have. And one of the major things that it has is stereo, and some really good stereo. Matter of fact, if you wanted to, you could set up one mic to be the left mic by doing so, and one mic to be the right mic by doing so. And it's actually really effective, and it works pretty darn good. Um, like I said, I love this thing. Uh, the one thing that really bums it, me out about it is you can't really tell which channel is which unless you label it, unless you uh, peek it, and then you have like a little peak light that comes on. But uh, yeah, now the one thing that this does not have in it that kind of bums me out is a compressor. This 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 mixer would be perfect if it just had a compressor built in. Um, but I do like it. It's one of the old Mackies before they weren't really cheap. So what do I got for a compressor? I have a Alus. I got an Alus or whatever it's called, um, thirty six thirty compressor. It has a dual channel compressor. So the main of the main things I wanted to do with the system is because this does do left and right audio, I wanted to actually buy some sort of a PV, like maybe a CS400. Um, you might be wondering, what do you mean CS400? Well, there's a stereo model of the CS400. It's a little oddball. What it has is it has two separate channels on it uh, with two separate volume knobs. And if you run them in mono, you can you can get about 400 watts out of it, almost 800 watts. Um, I don't know what the specifications are. I'm pretty sure you can only get about 400 watts out of it. Each channel is 200 watts, which is actually good because these speakers practically top out at around 375 or around 300. Those top out at 300, these top out at 375, and that tops out at like 1,000 for Christ's sake because it's got a JBL sub, although I wouldn't put it past 500 because um, the wiring in it is not up to the task of such, um, so I, I wouldn't do more than 500 with this guy. Um, so yeah, and I've even got a little light right here, and that helps out a lot because like when you're doing gigs and stuff and it's dark out, you take the light and you hang it out like that, and basically you can see your whole light board and stuff. It's a lot of help, um, and this thing comes off sometimes because it's dumb. So yeah, it's a lot, it's a, it's a very helpful thing to have, uh, but I wanted to actually move the mixer up to the very top, move this all the way up to the top, and put the CS400 at the bottom. Now this thing already weighs around like maybe 70, 80 pounds. With that mic, with that amp in there, this thing probably weighs a full blown 120 pounds. Um, so this is, and not including the rat's nest of cables. Some of the cables I actually stored in here when I bring the thing to gigs. And let me say, with one of those amps in here, this thing would weigh a metric shit ton. Therefore, I probably won't do it that often. But I have indeed wanted to do such a thing with this guy. I really wanted to actually um, hook this guy up in such a way. 
Uh, I thought it'd be really cool because I could set the compressor to both channels. Uh, compressor channel A would be left, channel B would be right, and I could set them up essentially on that CS400. CS400 is the lowest I've seen them go for about $69 to $79, um, but they're pretty far away and you have to have them shipped to you, so shipping would cost a lot more than the actual thing would. So I have to think about actually buying one. I'm going to have to save up for one of those guys. And uh, they're old. I mean, those things are dangerous. For those who do not know, those old CS400s are very dangerous to speakers if you do not have a built-in compressor on them where you're not cautious in the volume level you're getting on. Because one, the only method of protection it has is an overload light. Other than that, like it'll come on when you're popping your speakers, but it'll do jack shit. Uh, unlike that guy over there, the the, uh, the the 260C actually has, it's a disableable, when you want to disable this, you can set it to disable, but this is a, comp this does have a compressor on it, and the compressor does kick in to help prevent distorting, and it helps a lot, but uh, normally I leave it disabled, and I let the compressor and that guy do all the work, but, um, because it doesn't, it doesn't really compress so well, but, uh, that amp is dangerous enough without the compressor. I mean, like, I've blown up speakers with that guy before, um, mainly on purpose. Uh, I haven't blown up any of the big stuff. That amp's not powerful enough to blow up any of the big stuff. That is a dual-channel amp, unfortunately, though. It is a mono dual-channel. So, essentially, the only thing you're going to get out of that is um, mono. You can't really do dual-channel. It's not like that, which is kind of bummer. But one thing I do like about this is that these things were meant to be hooked in series, um... So what you could actually do is you could put two line inputs um, if you wanted to, and there's two line outputs. So these things were meant to be stacked, and these were meant for professional gigs that weren't supposed to move. So you would have two of these guys, and I'll, I'll get to that another time, but I'll explain that later. But yeah, this is not a bad amp. So yeah. Moving on, okay, then we'll get to this guy. Like I was saying, this guy is a little uh, interesting. This is a... A PV 260C monitor style amp. Now, the 260C uh, style amps came in all sorts of variations. One thing I love about PV is that there was never one of the same model of amp. There was always the same model, but it would have different variations of it. One of the things that I really loved about these guys is they had all sorts of versions. They had mixer amp outputs. Like, there was a mixer version of this that had, um, it had different inputs on it. XLRs, and you could directly phantom it, and that was a very high-end model of this, and then there were models that were made with pure equalization, oh my god, my camera's freaking out, there was a very, what the freak is going on with my camera? Wow, and it's getting worse. What the f Okay. Okay, that was really weird. Um, there are models of these guys that actually have, um, very fancy equalization methods for one channel. This is a generic monitor amp, which means that this guy right here is to drive something like those, or this. Um, nothing really too special. It's got an equalization thing on it, but essentially it's a very generic uh, 260C amp. It's one of the lowest end ones, although for its time it was very good. Um, and the 115 is of course were the highest end for their time. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, for that thing to be a transistor style amp, it's a full-blown solid-state transistor amp. Um, it sounds pretty damn good for its age. Our transistor stuff was not really so good sounding from when it first came out, but uh, PV did it right. <laughs> they really did. Uh, a lot, of course, a lot of the more modern PV amps, even though they're built like freaking uh, Chinese piece of craps, and they're not exactly up to the task, they still sound a lot better than one of these guys, so just keep that in mind. PV made some pretty good speakers back in the days, but the ramps were... Eh, they're a little off. I already described that guy. So basically, these are just random laptops, but these two laptops right here are my DJ computers. Um, this one mainly is a little bit more reliable than this guy, but these both do a good job of playing music, and uh, therefore, I don't really judge them. They do what they need to do, and therefore, there's nothing really to judge about them. So yeah, those these two computers seem to work just fine for what I use them for. Um... And that's good. I don't expect these guys to do much of anything, those old laptops. But they seem to do what I want them to do just good. Now, this leads us to more of the cables and stuff. And also, I've got the, uh, the tripods for those PVs. Now, these are these this whole mess of cables, it's like a freaking mess. There's my foot compared to the whole mess. 
but this is basically a mixture of XLRs, quarter inchers, extension cords, um, everything. It's like a combustion. It's a complete clusterfuck of cables. And here's what I got for mic stand. So I got a generic table mic stand. This is a pretty nice little stand. Oh, I also forgot this thing. This is a this is a Sony this is a Sony stereo cassette deck TCWR740. Uh, now I don't use this thing for DJ gigs, and it's kind of a home audio piece of equipment. It's a very high end home audio piece of equipment, but it's the nicest sounding cassette deck I own, and it sounds amazing. I mean, like this thing is awesome. It's very fancy too. Um, anyhow, that's what I got for those stands. I've got a generic microphone stand, and I've got a very fancy but old boom stand that I got off the side of the road. Um, so yeah, let's go over to mics. Oh god, this is gonna be kind of complex. I'm gonna turn the uh, the stupid thing on here so you can see better. So let's see what I got for mics. So in this bag, hold on, let me open it. In this bag, I've got a uh, I've got a Sennheiser uh, Wav. What the hell? What was in here? A Sennheiser Wav. This is a very nice mic. Um, wireless, of course, and of course. You know you're uh, awesome when you set the custom lavalier name to penis. <laughs> I did that more or less as a joke. But, uh, awesome mic. They even got a little lav in here for it. I don't use it much, though, so whatever. Uh, right here I've got a... This is a really awesome... This is a condenser microphone. Uh, this is a Sony ECM-44B. Whoops. The reason why... I, I have two of these, actually. The reason why I love them because uh, they, they're they really awesome. You can do some pretty cool stuff with this. I mean, like, so right here, this is obviously the microphone right here, as you can see. You can do some pretty awesome things with these. So you could actually phantom them off of your soundboard if it has phantom, or, I'm gonna have to put the camera down for this, or you could actually unscrew this right here. And there's, oh, that battery is old. Holy crap, that's an old battery. I haven't used this one. I only use the other one, so this is like original battery. Surprise it hasn't exploded. I'm, I'm probably not going to take it out, but you could actually put a double A in here if you wanted to, and you could phantom it that way, and that's how you could phantom it. Now, like I said, I have two of these guys. I only re really use them in the studio. I don't really use them anywhere else. So I'm going to put it back in this box here. Like I said, I only really use this in the studio, uh, mainly to the factor that it's mainly a studio use mic. But I got two of these. So here's the other one. Those are nice. Um, here's the mic. Here's the receiver for the uh, Sennheiser, the very fancy receiver. Uh, I love this thing. I really do. Um, right here is a Sennheiser Evolution mic. Th this thing is the best microphone I own. We're talking. Oh, here. I'm turning off the uh, the night vision here. But look at this Sennheiser E um, 838 or 835. <sighs> I have heard a lot of people love these mics. Um, they're, they're not very flat. They're very dynamic. Um, they pick up everything around them, which is the reason why I don't like them that much. But uh, they are awesome. I mean, this is the most expensive mic I own, and it's probably the best sounding one I own. Um, a lot of concert people use these. They love them. Um, so, yeah, these are very common between uh, audio, or like professional uh, people that actually do a lot of gigs. I'm very happy I own one of these because I these things sound awesome. I'm like, these are better than my Audio Technicas that I have. Um, I have some pretty nice Audio Technica ones that I'll show you. So right here is an, uh, an Audio Technica Freeway 600 series receiver. This is a very old receiver. This is nasty old. But it works. Uh, I got them for free so I can't complain. This is a, a Phantom mic. This is a Talkback series mic. Uh, this thing is a dynamic mic. It picks up everything. I mean, like, this This is a crappy mic, to be honest. The only reason I use it is because uh, sometimes I'll be doing gigs where I need a mic that needs to pick up everything around it. As an example, the drums. This mic does great for that, but it also backfeeds like a bitch, so I don't use it that much, but I don't even know what brand this is. I think it's a, uh... Oh, it's an Audio Technica. It's an Audio Technica AT859 uh, OM... L, K, or X. Um, so yeah, it's another Audio Technica because like I love Audio Technica. These are just like old lapel camera mics. These are uh, 
Asian WR Pro wireless receivers. These things are old and they sound like ass, but they work though. And if they work, then that's fine by me. You see the little antenna comes up. I think this one's actually broken. The antenna on it's broken, so I gotta have to push it in there for it to work. I got two of those. See, like I said, I got two more of those. Uh, I got a bunch of those things. And here's the actual receiver for it. This is what the receiver looks like. This is what the other receiver looks like. And this one, then I've got a little, uh, I've got a, uh, a realistic uh, lavalier attached to it. I don't use these guys that much. They're kind of crappy. For whatever reason, I have a smart board remote in here. And here's the matching receiver to that guy. This is a do not turn off. Okay. I don't know who wrote that on there. This is a uh, ATWT601X. So th these are very old. And a lot of people might not, and a lot of people might say, oh, these are not that great. They don't sound that fantastic. They're not good for vocals. They really aren't. If you're doing a presentation, they'll work just fine. And if you're singing, you don't want to use these. But they are reliable as hell. Um, these things are super reliable in, in gigs when you're doing, like, uh, plays and stuff. They're awesome for that. And I highly recommend using them for that kind of general purpose. And they're really good for that. And here's another one. Uh, those. And another one. I have three of them. And uh, there's the labs for it. And here's just a random cable that should be over there. Shouldn't have done that, but whatever. Um, in this case, I got a Sure. This is obviously a much newer case for what it is, but this is a very old Sure. Uh, this is a, uh, a PE15D uh, Dynamic Dual Z. Uh, this is a very old mic, and it, it works still. I don't use it that much for gigs because... Well, it's not that reliable anymore, and as you can see, it's been battered up. This actually did fall one time, and it broke, um, and it was thrown out, and I basically, all that was matter is in the diaphragm, there's a wi there's wires that go from here to the diaphragm, and those were disconnected, so I simply soldered them back together, and it worked again, although this mic is a little iffy, because when you turn phantom power on any mixer on, this will cut out, and most of my mixers, it's either phantom on or off for all channels, so... I can't really use that, that mic right there, and this one right here, and this together, because either one or the other won't work. Uh, it's a little odd, um, but this guy is very picky about phantom power, so that's why I don't use it that much. And it's also a little picky in general. Um, it doesn't like, it doesn't like certain audio channels on my Mackie mixer. The Razmod has no problem with. This is an old uh, Perma Power. This is a division of Audio Technica, I believe. Uh, what was this? Oh, it's a, it's a division of Sure back in the day. It works and all, but it's, uh, it's of course, a, uh, a standard wine. It's very old, and it sounds really crisp. Um, not crisp as in, like, not crisp as in clear, but it really only covers high notes, um, from what I've noticed. It doesn't really like to hit the lower notes, so vocalists don't really use this. It's really good for just picking up maybe, like, a trumpet or something. It'll do something like that just fine, but I don't really use it for anything other than that. And here's the other receivers for those guys. This is a, a DR1000 series. These are old audio technicos, and this is another 600 series, so these are old receivers. And there's uh, another lav mic for god knows what, and there's like something hanging off. There's like duct tape on this guy. This is a good lav that I use. And right here, I got two of these guys. These are my Audio Technica. These are my babies. I love these things. These are Audio Technica AE 4100s. Um, these are nice. I mean, these are really good. They're a little midi, midi though. They they really cover the mids, um, not so much the lower frequencies or the higher frequencies, but they're perfect for talking. They're very crisp for talking and stuff. Uh, there's another one in that bag right there. But I use these mainly for my studio setup where I do like uh, professional video logs and stuff. I use these guys because they handle that kind of stuff so damn well. Uh, that sounds really professional and good. So that's what I use these guys for. Although, of course, like I said, they don't really, they're really middish. Uh, they don't really like um, a little midi. And there, of course, there's the other one. Like I said, I have two of these. Here's the other one. See? Yeah, I have two of these now. I got them both for a good price. One I got for free, the other one I got for 50 bucks. So yeah, that's that. I gotta put all these back in here. That's all the stuff laid out here. Um, but not bad. All this equipment is pretty darn good for what it is. 
Very happy that I own this stuff. This is all practically very good equipment. Oh, and I'm dropping it everywhere. This is very good equipment. I use it a lot, and I find myself that this is very useful stuff to own. I need to shut this bag. This bag is open. Um, if you like any... Oh, here. Sorry, the camera's shaking around here. But if you'd like to comment and ask me for any requests on maybe an individual piece of equipment, I'll be happy to do so. Um, I'm oh, very open to requests on this kind of stuff. And therefore, I'll do it. If you want me to make like an individual sound test of each, each piece of equipment. Um, I very, I've noticed that the audio techniques kind of have to be tuned in so there's more treble, more bass. Um, because like I said, the other guys do it automatically but the audio techniques are more mids than anything else. Oops, I forgot this. Yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.